Hello, BookTube. I've got some mail for you today on a grim, overcast, incredibly humid, incredibly hot day here in Boston. Uh, relief is supposed to be on the horizon in the form of rain all day tomorrow. I don't believe a single drop of rain is going to fall. Uh, but I, we're on a streak for mail. <laughs> we're, we're, oh, I'm opening mail on this channel again. That feels wonderful. It gives me a chance to sort of check in with you and lean an elbow across the back fence to bring you up to speed on all the fascinating details of my little life. <laughs> like, for instance, my, my houseplants. For 170,000 years, I would have said I do not keep houseplants. They die as soon as they look at me. But I have had four houseplants now for months. And they are still thriving, but there has been a problem. I have, I don't remember the name of it, but it's a, one of these long, viney things that you can hang. I haven't been hanging mine. I put mine, it was one of the first ones I got. I put it on the shelf. And then I got a Monstera plant. I wanted something with, you know, that was tall. So I got a Monstera plant, put it on that shelf right next to all these other plants, and it started blocking the sunlight. It started moving its, its fronds to block the sunlight, especially from that long viney plant. Uh, and I looked, I finally got around, I just reminded myself to go and look at it yesterday, and oh my god, the viney plant is on death's doorstep. I was pulling off yellow dead leaves and branches all over it. I think it is still alive. I'm pretty sure that a lot of the branches look alive to me. It doesn't look anywhere near as full as it once did. So I removed it from the shelf. It came in a, in a container that has a little hook. So I hooked it from the curtain rod. So that the Monstera plant can't block its sunlight anymore. It's, it's all by itself up there. And I'm hoping that that allows it to recover. It also certainly allowed me to space out the other plants so that maybe the Monstera plant doesn't kill any of the others either. <laughs> we shall see. The, I may have to just move the Monstera plant to its own spot. I've been told by a lot of gardeners that they are extremely hardy and very easy to keep alive, that I could just put it somewhere else. It doesn't have to be on a shelf in direct sunlight. Uh, the problem with that is that I've been told by the exact same number of gardeners that no, that will kill it instantly. <laughs> because I think gardeners are making it up as they go along. Uh, so, so we shall see. But I have I've moved my the viney draping plant from the other plants. The first time I've done that. I'm hanging it up. I actually kind of like the aesthetic of it. I wouldn't mind getting another one of those things and treating it right, putting it up there to start with, rather than putting it anywhere near a plant that's, to my mind, deliberately trying to block the light. The Monstera plant gets plenty of life, it, of light. It looks to me like it's deliberately trying to block the other plants, which certainly lines up with the book that I read this year, Planta Sapiens, about how plants think and plan and plot. Uh, but it doesn't line up with anything that I know about actual plant physiology, where a plant should not have the ability to intend anything. It should not have the ability to plan or compete in this way anyway. Mindlessly, yes, but this thing isn't mindlessly competing. That, I would imagine, would be a, a matter of roots and whatnot. This thing is trying to block the other plants. But anyway, <laughs> I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about it today and tomorrow, because there's going to be precious little sunlight today and tomorrow. I don't think there's going to be any rain, but it's not going to be, they're not going to be any bright sunny days, at least not in long stretches. Uh, so let's look, let's look at the mail, which is very varied today because there are a couple of things that aren't books. Let's get those over with first. One of you very kindly sent me this. This is a clip-on lapel mic. You just clip it on right there and it plugs directly into the lightning port of a phone. So I'm recording this right now on my MacBook, but if I record on a phone, the phone would have a lightning port, and probably there's a lightning port uh, to USC adapter that I could get to plug this directly into the laptop. But the point is, I think that that's all you do. That you, there is no laying of audio tracks. There is no more technology involved than this. It simply amplifies what you're saying. Which is very tempting. If it, I haven't tried it yet, but it's very tempting if it works. So I'm going to try this out and see. Although, is it a moot point? I have been testing the audio. I test the audio now before every video bank of videos that I make, and the audio doesn't seem bad to me at all on on any of these. I mean, I did two videos the other day on the iPad. Everybody commented that the sound was fine on that, but nobody said the sound was was incredibly bad on the third video I made that day, which was made on a MacBook. I made yesterday's videos I made on this MacBook. No one complained about the sound. Is that all because you're all just used to it being terrible? Or was it audible? On Certainly on my test that I do, the audio test that I do with this, it plays back fine to me. 
uh, and these are old speakers on this device. So I'd assume that on a newer device it would play just just fine. And that hasn't been true. The thing that started this whole audio melodrama on this channel is that I, w I played back a video weeks ago and I could barely hear it. So I myself noticed the problem. But I am not noticing that problem with this. So I'm curious to know, of course, we have a possible solution right here, a microphone. Of course, it won't work to make videos on the new iPhone 11 Pro that I got. I'm just dependent on the kindness of strangers and everybody sending me tech. But it won't work to amp up the audio on that because I need a tripod. I broke my tripod. So I need a tripod first in order to film videos on that phone. But if I don't need to film videos on that phone, I'd rather not. So if the audio is fine on the laptop, well, anyway. But anyway, in anticipation of that phone, I think I also got something else uh, that turns out not to pan out. Uh, I got this. Look at this. Believe it or not, this is a Bluetooth keyboard. <laughs> it's a tiny Bluetooth keyboard. You unfold it, you pull down a slot, and make that out in light. There we go. That is where your device sits, whether it's a phone or an iPad or a tablet of some kind. Your device sits there, and you connect it by Bluetooth to this machine, and you just type on this, on this keyboard. And then when you're done, uh, you just, you know, you just fold it up. <laughs> it's a tiny little thing like that. Uh, I got this originally because I was, I was misestimating the size of the iPhone 11 Pro. I was thinking that it was a phablet, a combination of phone and tablet. I was thinking that it was big, that, like these, these big iPhones that are made. I was thinking it was one of those. It would be my very first. And it wasn't. It's, uh, can I actually reach it from here? It's, uh, yes. it's the same size as my iPhone 6S, basically. It's the same size as that. So if I wanted, to, it, would, it would sort of dilute the, the uh, experience of using this thing. See, I would I turn down the, uh, the slot there, and then this thing goes right there. It would sort of dilute the experience of that, I would think, to use a phone that's this small. But I'm going to give it a try. And also, uh, another thing that came to my mind when I saw this... Uh, you know, once I got it in the mail, I realized, okay, well, it was a lot more attractive when you thought you were getting a phone that's almost twice this size, and you're not. So this is a little bit less attractive for that because this will be this the screen here will be harder to read. But then I thought, what about my uh, my various iPad Minis? Would they be compatible with this? Could I put an iPad Mini on that slot and type on that? I'm gonna try. I'm gonna I'm gonna experiment with it. It was cheap, so uh, it's a it's worth it. It's worth it to experiment. Uh, okay, so we have a microphone and a small Bluetooth keyboard. I have a feeling that no matter what happens, whether these are compatible with my iPad Mini or not, or whether or not I do, in fact, explore the larger phone world, I, I have this iPhone 11, and I really, really like it. It's a really strong machine, and it has tons of storage. But I am a little curious what a, a much larger phone would be like. No matter what happens, I think this was a good investment. And also, no matter what happens, I think I'm going to be buying other Bluetooth keyboards in the search for one that I really like. And I might end up really liking this one. But it doesn't strike me. I mean, it's metal. But it doesn't strike me that this is going to take a lot of punishment. So I might need another one anyway. Uh, but let's look, at, let's look at the mail here. Oh, right. Before we get to the packages, I opened a package off camera that I, is full of books that I wanted to show you. <laughs> one of you sent me Regency romances. These are the kinds of paperbacks that I love the most, old Signet Regency romances. We have the second Lady Emily. I would ask really carefully what happened to the first one. <laughs> what happened to the first Lady Emily? We have Edith Layton, the Duke's Wager. I have this one already, but uh, it's good to have a double. We have Sheila Walsh, the Sergeant Major's daughter. Looks like they are in, ta they are in the country somewhere. They are not in London. Could be, but maybe not. And is that an... Uh, well, e the covers of these things are always a little bit odd because they're always visual anachronisms. Then we have the Nobody. I have this already, but I'm glad to have it again. And then uh, Mary Balow, who went on to a huge career as a romance author. This is The Temporary Wife. Now, I haven't, I haven't done an exhaustive check uh, to see how many of these I already have. Wait a minute. Are we having a preponderance of gingers? We actually are, aren't we? There's one. There's two. 
there's no, there's three, three out of five redheads. <laughs> okay, great. I'm rather fond of redheads myself. So, uh, so I got those five Regency romances. Always a joy. Always. I, I haven't yet systematically checked all the Regencies to make sure that, see which of these I have and don't have, but I know there are a couple that I don't have. So, so that's, that's part number one. Then we'll move on to the packaging. Sorry, this mail hall is all over creation. Uh, but we definitely want some packages. What is this first one? Uh, okay, this comes out next year. This is another book that I don't have to worry about. Uh, this is uh, n a collection of short stories, Neighbors and Other Stories by Diane Oliver, uh, who has published only four stories before her life... She published only four stories before her life was tragically cut short a week before graduating from the Iowa Writers' Workshop in 1966 at the age of 22. One of those stories, Neighbors, went on to win the O. Henry Prize and lend its name to this to the first ever collection of her writing, which is this. Wow. This is posthumous. Long posthumous. Uh, it features an introduction by Tayari Jones. This is a bold and haunting debut collection of 14 stories, and it follows various characters as they navigate the day-to-day -day perils of Jim Crow racism and reintroduces a missing figure in the canon of 20th century African-American literature whose voice reverberates into the present day. Okay, all right, that's going to be tricky, isn't it, obviously, for obvious reasons. Uh, because for a number of different reasons, uh, Grove Atlantic is very, very earnestly trying to critic-proof this book. Uh, she died a long time ago, so it's a debut collection that's showing up half a century after she wrote it. It's a debut collection from the Iowa Writers' Workshop. That means I can practically enumerate its weaknesses right now without reading a word of it. But I'm not going to be allowed to mention any of those. So, <laughs> so uh, this, I think this will be more for the fun of reading than anything else. I'll be curious to see what kind of attention it gets in the press, but it certainly won't get critical attention, uh, which is kind of what I'm here for. So, you know, as a phenomenon, as a reprint phenomenon, it's interesting, definitely. Uh, as, a, as a figure, a, you know, a thing of curiosity, very much interesting. But uh, when it comes to new releases, actually, when it, when it comes to any book, now that I have you, now that I have this, all of you listening, uh, when it comes to books, I'm here to critically assess. And this cannot be critically assessed for a number of different reasons. So uh, I don't know what I'll do about it. Fortunately, I don't have to worry about what I'll do about it for right now. I don't have to worry until you know next year. Uh, so let's see what this next one is. We'll move on from here. What is this next one? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, this comes out in early November. Paging Vin from Revenant Reads. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, this is by Martin Wittock, and it is called American Vikings. Look at that. Oh my. A vivid and illuminating new history exploring the early Viking settlements in North America. Vikings are an enduring subject of fascination. They are indeed, for me and a couple of other booktubers. Uh, the combination of adventure, mythology, violence, and exploration continues to grip our attention. As a result, for more than a millennium, the, the Vikings have traveled far and wide, not least across the turbulent seas of our minds and imaginations. Okay, whoever wrote this pub sheet earned their pay for the week. Did Vikings reach North America? Depending on what you mean by North America, that's uncontestable, isn't it? Uh, for centuries, medieval sagas, first recorded in Iceland, claimed that Vikings reached North America around the year 1000. This book explores that claim, separating fact from fiction and myth from mischief. From the latest archaeological evidence to the myth-making of 19th century Scandinavian pioneers in the Midwest, this book is a journey from the high seas of the, a millennia ago to the swirling waters and dark undercurrents of the online world of today. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, the online world. What does that mean? No doubt the warlike Vikings would have understood how their image could be weaponized. In the same way, they would probably have get, grasped how their dramatic, violent, passionate, and discordant mythologies could appeal to our era and cultural setting. They might, though, have been more surprised at how their image has been commercialized and commodified. Okay. Uh, all right. This comes out in early November. I'm reading it tonight, <laughs> definitely. So it sounds to me, I mean, I think whoever wrote the pub sheet is, is obviously not wanting to give things away, and I appreciate that. But it sounds from just the implication on the sheet that the author is going to say they, that the Vikings never did reach North America. And that that was mythologizing on the part of Nordic in immigrants in the 19th century. Uh, what to see about that? That's fascinating. Uh, then we have a box. 
Uh, so we'll, we'll, we have a box, and then we'll finish up uh, for today. Unless there's another mail hall later on in the day. But let's, let's take a look and see. I stopped. Okay. Once there was no more obstacle to the driver getting the last jelly donut, they turned off the siren. Uh, so what is... Oh, oh no. All right, we have... Uh, we have more tech. Oh my god, we're ending as we started. We're ending with more tech. Uh, what is this? Oh my god, it's another microphone. All right, so the audio problem definitely struck a chord with a few people. Uh, can we see what this thing looks like? No, we cannot. You do not want me to get into this package. All right, so I have to destroy it like I was a lowland silverback gorilla. Uh, oh, is this a lowland silverback gorilla that's in here? It's a triple. <laughs> it's, a, it's a triple. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's very interesting, suddenly. What is that, baby? Looks a lot like you. <laughs> Somebody's suddenly very interested because this looks vaguely rodentish. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I just. I always hesitate to do this because I don't know if I'm gonna if I'm gonna use it, but I have to tear apart the packaging. I have to rip apart everything to get at this thing. Uh, we'll just do that. We'll just rip apart everything here. So what is this? It's got a million things in it. What is it? It's a video mic Mi L, a directional microphone for Apple devices. I don't see this. <laughs> this does not look like this. Uh, I don't know what this thing is. What is this? Aside from, aside from drastically interesting my little bean. It's drastically interesting her because she thinks it might be worth killing. <laughs> no, baby, this isn't, this isn't alive, little girl. I know it looks like things you like to kill, but it's not alive. Uh, okay. Uh... Okay, that kind of looks, that right there kind of looks like a, a lightning port, like a lightning prong there, but how on earth could I get that into the computer? Uh, I mean, there's no way, right? There's no way that this is going to work. Here, let's, well, anyway, <laughs> I will read the instructions carefully. I will figure it out if I can preserve this from my little bean. I'm assuming this is to muffle sound, to, to make the sound less, less harsh. Oh, baby. Oh. oh no, no, baby, you can't do that. <laughs> she wants to destroy this. I'm gonna have to be very careful. If I drop it in any way, it's doomed. <laughs> Absolutely doomed. Uh no, baby, you can't have this little girl. There is a, a socket there for something. Well, I'll figure it out. It's it's some sort of uh microphone but it it very much does not come with anything else it doesn't come with a cord of any kind so i'll have to figure out what this is uh in the process of saving it from my little being <laughs> you can't see her she's right off camera but she is unbelievably interested <laughs> she's unbelievably interested oh my what no baby you can't eat this thing <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> no, baby. I'm sorry. It just looks like something that you would kill. It isn't actually something that, that you get to kill. Uh, okay, well, I'll have, to figure out, I'll have to figure out how to use that. But that is the end of the mail hall here. We got uh, American Vikings. We got a debut short story collection that's 40 or 50 years coming. Uh, we got, I got five Signet Regency romances. And then a bunch of tech. Two microphones, one that clips onto my lapel, one that I guess is supposed to plug directly into an Apple device. Uh, I don't see any... What I want is a kind of a step-by-step, -step, here's how you do this thing, and I don't see that. But uh, we'll see. Uh, yeah, see, the, the back says you get one video microphone, one windshield, which I guess is that fuzzy thing, the Tribble, and then one mounting bracket, and I guess the mounting bracket is attached to the microphone. I'll have to figure out how, how this all works. It, it isn't intuitive. I don't see how to do it now. I mean, the piece doesn't look like that. The piece is way back here, and, and it's bracketed by two 
arms that make that we, I, I don't see how it would work. I'll give it a try and see if I can't. And also uh, this, a, a folding Bluetooth keyboard. <laughs> All metal, which is attractive because I'm really hard on my things. But we'll see if uh, what the experience is like using it with a, with a device. Uh, and if I can't figure out this, this Tribble microphone, well, then I'll have some sort of a guest over, and the guest will figure it out for me. <laughs> so there you go. That is a rather ramshackle mail video. Uh, I'll try to I'll try to streamline the next one. Hopefully, the next one won't be more tech than book. Uh, so I'll wrap this up for now, and I will see you then. Thank you, Booktube.